Well, it's December 15th, and we're continuing our walk through the book of James. And our theme today is to love your neighbor as yourself. Sounds great, catchy, really hard to do. Uh, it's hard to love people the way we want to be loved, but that's the call of the heart of God for, for the people who follow Jesus. So listen to these words from James chapter 2, beginning in verse 5, and we'll read through verse 9. Listen, my dear brothers and sisters, has not God chosen those who, are, those who are poor in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith and to inherit the kingdom he promised those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor. Is it not the rich who are exploiting you? Are they not the ones who are dragging you into court? Are they not the ones who are blaspheming the noble name of him to whom you belong? If you really keep the royal law found in Scripture, love your neighbor as yourself, you are doing right. But if you show favoritism, you sin and are convicted by the law as lawbreakers. Boy, this goes back to the same theme we were talking about last week of really loving people where they're at, loving people in a broad sense and not, not just showing so much favoritism towards one group or one specific kind of person. And we need to let God speak to our hearts about this topic. And so in this passage, it talks about the rich. And it's not trying to say uh, being rich is wrong or rich people are evil, but it is saying in that context, in that time, there were some ways the rich were behaving that were very dishonoring to others. And there is something, I, th I think sometimes the more that we have, the more we feel like we deserve. And sometimes we can feel like from a, a lofted place, if, if we were kind of perched up above others financially, we can feel like maybe we're better than them in other ways too. And, and being having more financially doesn't make us better than other people. It makes us different than other people. And, and maybe you, and here and here's a here's a, a sound reality for all of life. Wherever you are financially, there's someone who has more than you, and there's somebody who has less than you. And we don't want to be treated better or worse by what we have. We want to be treated out of who we are. And that's part of what the what, what the the scriptures are trying to get to and, and speak to us here. So here's some thoughts from this passage. Be compassionate to the poor. In all times, there's people who struggle in poverty. And when there's people who are trying their best and working hard, but man, they, they are struggling. There's places in the world where people can do all they can with all the strength they have, but they're still struggling. Man, we want to come alongside. We want to show compassion. We want to care for those who are struggling. We want, we want to be like Jesus and help lift them up. Also in this passage, we're encouraged that we, if we have a lot, to not exploit others. Exploitation is a dangerous thing. And, and if we're in a place of influence, do we use that as, as a way to then kind of step on the backs of others to get higher and higher? Or do we look and say, God's provided, God's been good to me, so from where I am, I'm going to actually lift up and encourage and be a blessing to others. Don't exploit a position of privilege, but be thankful and help lift others up to where God would have them be. And then we're encouraged to love our neighbor as ourselves. There's something built into that that makes us say we've got to love ourselves the way God loves us, to see ourselves as God sees us, but then to love others the way we would want to be loved, to listen the way we want to be listened to, to help the way we would want to be helped, to care the way we, want, we would want to be cared for. So love others in the way we would want to be loved. So here's a question we should ask ourselves often. How do I want to be treated? I walk into a new situation. How do I want to be treated, welcomed, cared for? I'm in a time of need. How do I want to be treated? Ask how I want to be treated and then say, can I, in the power of Jesus, treat others the way my heart would long to be treated? And that will make a difference. And then some words of challenge. Here's one word of challenge. Don't let wealth capture you. Don't let wealth corrupt you. Uh, Jesus didn't say that money is evil, but he did say the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. I should correct that. Jesus didn't say that, but that's in the Bible. Um, and so I don't want you calling in saying Kevin got it wrong, but, but the Bible is clear that, that we are not to let the love of money consume us. Be careful of that. Here's another encouragement. Be kind to those who are really hurting. Keep your eyes open. Notice the people who are struggling. Come alongside of them. Be kind and help lift them up. And then love more than before. Let your love always be growing. How have you loved your kids, your grandkids, your family members? Can I love them in a fresh new way? If you're married, how do you love your spouse? It's easy to get in a rut. Love more than you loved before. If you look back in two months and you say, am I loving my spouse more than I did before? I, I would hope you would say, yeah, because I've been working at it. I've been, I've been finding new creative ways to show that I love them. Love your neighbor more than you did before. Even love your enemies as much as you can for the glory of Jesus. 
Let's pray together and let's ask God to speak to our hearts about loving our neighbors as ourselves. God, this is our prayer, that we would know how you love us, that we would see ourselves through your eyes, the lens of your grace and your goodness and that we would love other people the way we would want to be loved. We would care the way we want to be cared for. Jesus, teach us how to love in a way that honors you and blesses others. We pray this in your name. Amen. Well, God bless you. And this Sunday, if you're part of Shoreline Church, 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock on campus, full program for kids, fully active on the campus, and also online and outdoors in the courtyard. If the weather permits, we'll see you for worship this coming Sunday.